we're talking about um, making food that um, has expired free to people who desperately need food. I think I think that's the gist of it. Um, Jasmine, come on, help me out here. Ah! Um, there she is. Um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I pressed the wrong thing. Typical. Love your makeup. Your makeup. Uh, is yes. Um, it. I didn't want to scare anyone off. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fabulous. <laughs> so you you've been doing a shoot, have you? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh. With a makeup artist called Booba, and oh. he's known for his quite big uh, big thing. I mean, this is less than it was. <laughs> but anyway, um, on to the subject. You've recently been talking about freeganism. Exactly. Yes. I'm, I'm a big fan of freeganism. I was talking about this, oh, about 10, 15 years ago, um, and it's kind of come back to thought. So what freeganism is, is basically dumpster diving behind supermarkets because... <laughs> As you know, supermarkets are throwing out, and it's not just supermarkets, cafes, restaurants, you know, food outlets, basically. They're throwing out food every day that is genuinely perfectly good to eat. Obviously, right. there's some that isn't, but the majority, it's, they do it for legal reasons. You know, it comes to a sell-by date, you have to throw it out if you can't sell it. And um, I, I found people, again, as I said, 10, 15 years ago, who were actually going in and taking the stuff out. I've seen videos of people going, look, it's perfectly good bread. Look, it's good at tomatoes. Look, look, you know. and, and I was thinking, well, that makes sense to me. I mean, I hate waste, and I certainly hate wasted food. I mean, probably like you, I was brought up, you do not waste food. You just don't, you know. You so, eat everything on the plate. Absolutely. Yeah, no, you do. And, you know, it's yeah. always like, what about the poor children in wherever it was, you know? Um, and so, yes, always, always. Yes, and you go, send it to them, I don't care. But <laughs> that's another yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was promoting then freeganism. I was saying, you know, go go into these, these dumpsters. Then the supermarkets, I, I, a lot of them put them behind walls and, you know, you couldn't get to them. And, and I found also it's illegal. It is literally illegal to go into somebody else's bin and take something out, even though they've thrown it out. Yes. It's an illegal thing to, to take it out because that is still their property. If it's in their bin, it's still their property. And I was saying at the time, look, we need to change this law. But then other supermarkets were saying, well, the problem is that if people take something and then they get ill, they can come to us and go, your food made us ill, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. Yeah. But so I, I am aware that in other countries they have, um, well, it's, I think it's, this one com country might be America, they have um, what they call a good Samaritan code so that <clears throat> food that's thrown out, you can sort of mark it. And people agree, right, you know, if I, I take it at my own risk. And I think that we should have something like that. You take the food, it's free. Somebody else has thrown it away. You say, okay, I'm taking it at my own risk, fine. Um, and, and that would mean that so many people would get actual, genuine, free food. Um, yeah. And we wouldn't have this horrible waste. We throw away 15 million tonnes of food every year. You know, when you think of the price of food right now, that could really, that could feed loads of families. Yeah. Um, there are restaurants even that you're not allowed to take a goodie bag, um, yes. a doggy bag. Yes. Because they are scared of being sued. So health and safety, I think you're going to be, it's going to be really tough to find yes. health and safety on this. Well, this is true. Absolutely. You know, I mean, literally we will have to get lawyers, I think. To, the, here is the, the new way of doing it. And that, you know, you, you have a, a form that says, right, I, I'm going to sign this. This is my doggy bag. I will take responsibility, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yes, I agree. I, I think people not being given doggy bags is so wrong because you've literally paid for that food. That's yours, you know. So, in, again, in law, you should be allowed to take it home. I do that. It's my lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> Quite exactly. Early. Or it's a bone for the dog or whatever. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yeah, literally a doggy yeah. bag, exactly. So, yeah, that would be good. So, how are you going about this? How are you progressing this 
Yes, good point. We, we've started a petition on change.org. So anybody who's watching, do please go to change.org, look up freeganism um, and do sign up because, you know, if you believe it, I think we, we should push this forward. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to, to Parliament. We're going to find a, an MP to, to back this because and, and what I want to do is is to produce it for them in the, in a form that they can just take to parliament and say right we should do this this and this we should change the law on this uh, we should make this more you know easier for for supermarkets and people to to organize um and this is how we would sort out as you say health and safety because that's the nightmare it is the health and safety element of it um and you know enable um, supermarkets and other food outlets to have a way to offer the, the food that's, that's not disruptive to the neighbours because I have heard from somebody put a comment on Money Magpie saying oh we've got dumpster divers around our place and they they leave rubbish all over the place and you know that's really unhelpful yeah. so yes. there may be a Supermarkets can do it and maybe have a table outside with, with the food that they're just literally giving away and then people can take it. And, yeah. As they used to have a trolley with free vegetables, am, am I right in thinking that? Yeah, you're right, yeah, absolutely, and that's great. I mean, yeah. so that's brilliant. Just yeah. put it in the, in the trolleys and it is going to disappear. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It really, it really is because food, the price of food is really going up. I don't know what it's like in Dubai with you, Caroline, but here in Britain, you know, they're saying that, that the underlying um, inflation rate is 4.5%. Well, if you look at food, it's, it's way more than that, particularly when it comes to the basics like pasta, eggs, bread, you know, they are rocketing up. And People are, are genuinely worried right now. They're worried about heating bills. As you know, in, in April, I mean, they've already gone up, but in April, they're going to go up by another 54%, which is staggering. And the price of food going up. So we're all needing to find ways to get cheaper or in, indeed free food and, and other items that you have to have each day. There are going to be a lot of people who are too shy to take food out of those trolleys. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't know if you've noticed, you know, again, the way I was brought up was, you know, it, you you eat it, you know, okay, if, if you dropped it on the floor, you've got the two second rule. Um, yeah. Yeah. If it's in the fridge, you know, it's fine. I, I will eat most things unless it's actually walking out of the fridge on its own legs. Yeah. As far yeah. as I'm concerned, you know, the yeah. sniff test. But then you've got other people who won't touch food beyond its best buy date. You know, those are yeah. like oh, 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 all scared. Yeah. So, yeah, there are there are there are going to be quite a few people who would not touch it. But there'll be other people like me who'd be like, oh, free. I'll have one of those. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, I get David to taste things and ask them if they're fizzy. <laughs> if yes. they're fizzy, don't eat them. No, exactly. I, I, when you, you know, when you have the orange juice in the fridge and, and it opens and there's a sort of, as it opens, think, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> if it's expanded, it probably yeah. isn't good. Probably not a good idea. Exactly. <laughs> so, you're, so how many uh, signatures do you need on your petition? Well, I need a thousand, really. We've got over 200 at the moment, which is a start. You know, that's a good yeah. one. We could do with a thousand, yeah. I think. Um, and then we, we will set up a petition on the, the government website as well. Um, and I have a, a couple of MPs that I'll be talking to and um, a, a Baroness as well about this. Because, you know, honestly, I think a lot of MPs would be behind this because they know. That, that it's really, really tough for people. We've, I mean, I've mentioned energy and food. It's also fuel. Petrol has gone right up um, and it's continuing to go up. The price of oil is going up again. That's going to be something you will know about. Um, and in April, the national insurance tax, you know, the national insurance that we pay, that's going up as well. So we're, we're looking at a really tough time, particularly from April onwards. And I think, you know, everything that we can do to make things a little bit easier, um, a little bit more affordable, will be worthwhile. Right. So other than buying something, because some supermarkets have trolleys where you buy something and put it in the trolley 
where you physically buy it and put it in the trolley for people who need yes. food. Yes, true, so true. This is a way of helping without spending money. Sign the petition. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. It is, yes. It, it literally just sign the petition, go to change.org, um, and you'll find that. And also um, on Money Magpie um, Instagram and on my Instagram, Jasmine Bertles, We've got links to it as well. Say, come on, sign the petition. Um, because I certainly, I, I do have access to some MPs, I'm grateful to say. But it really helps if you say, go, look, look, got 1,000 people on this petition, got 10,000 right. on that petition, you know, to just free up food for those who need it. Uh, that would be that would be really great if we could do that. Okay, send me the link and I'll, uh, I'll story it also and we'll see if we can get some signatures. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you can help. Um, just even one person to mm -hmm. to get some free food. Yes, exactly. It'd exactly. be amazing. So, uh, how are you doing with your other um, schemes? Oh yes, lots of schemes going on at the moment. Um, on the food side, by the way, we we are um, doing more and more articles on how to get cheaper food and also um, energy, cheaper energy. Um, we're, I'm going to be running some webinars on, you know, how to cope. Essentially, this, this is, you know, what it what it boils down to with a lot of people is how to cope at the moment yeah. with these price rises. Um, so, you know, I'm telling people all sorts of stuff. In fact, we have. Um, a special uh, I'm doing an IG live on Friday at 12:30, and I'm doing it with a, um, a lovely chef called Ben Abrell from Sorted Food, which is which is a huge YouTube channel. They've been going for a few years. They've got loads of fantastic ideas for how to make really delicious recipes, how delicious food on on a budget. So that's what I'm going to be talking about from 12:30 to one on Friday. Um, and also, um, the, another big thing that I'm doing is um, I'm talking about uh, this is the whole, you know, on, on the other end of the scale, if you like. Um, I'm going to be doing a webinar soon on um, the, the new money and the new financial system. We're, I think we're right now we're going through a sea change in the way we run our money and the way the world currencies are going. Um, and we're particularly seeing that um, now in Canada. I don't know if you've been following what's been happening in Canada, but the Canadian um, prime minister has, um, and he declared a state of emergency, in my view, entirely unnecessarily, but there you go. And he's frozen the bank accounts of a whole load of can Canadians. This, yeah, just frozen them. And this has sent shockwaves across the world, actually. Um, and it's meant that a lot of people are buying the gold, they're buying Bitcoin. Um, people are worried now about their own accounts because, you know, literally a government can do this. He's shown you, they can do this. So, yeah, that is scary. It is. It really is scary. And something that I'm, I'm fighting against and I'm going to keep fighting and fighting and fighting is the, the potential imposition of what they're calling a central bank digital currency. And now what I, what this is, is it, it, they take all the, the kind of clever ideas from cryptocurrencies, but whereas cryptocurrencies are decentralized, so they're, 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 there's no central authority that, that runs cryptocurrency, with a central bank digital currency, it's all going to be funneled through the government, basically. I mean, central bank, basically, the government. So everything you earn, everything you spend is going to be controlled by the government. Do you see a possible problem with that anyway? <laughs> yes. I'm sure that we should all be following you to find out how we can avoid that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to be fighting against it. The main way, honestly, that we can avoid it is for everybody to be aware of it and say yes. to their MPs, no, no, we will not have this. Because but are I'm they going to listen? Yeah. Well, are that's they the point. Will they? I, I mean, mine doesn't. <laughs> I've written to her a few times and she goes, she essentially, she writes back going, yes, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I think it's in the government's interest also totally. to be looking after the banks. Yes, totally. For In their interest and in their interest to control everything we do. I think what we're seeing right now is the Western countries trying desperately to bring in what the Chinese government has, total control 
of its its population. So that would be certainly with central bank digital currencies. It would be with QR codes everywhere. That's that was the idea of the vaccine passport. It's nothing to do with health. The the vaccine passport was to get the the system going where you you have to have a papers please. You know you have to put your QR code in to do anything. You know. Um, this, this, these are the things that will usher in this kind of domination, government domination, and I'm fighting that um, in every way that I can see. <laughs> I never would have thought that Great Britain would go that far, that, that the people would allow it to go that far. Yeah, and I think that the reason that it's getting to this stage is because most of us are not aware of it. I mean, you know, central bank digital currency, CBDC, you know, just hearing the words makes you just go, yeah, I'm bored, I'm already bored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frankly. But, you know, if somebody actually explains what it is, then you go, what? It's the twist. Yes. You know, so I think this is this is what it is, that the vast majority of the country don't understand that this is actually being talked about. Rishi Sunak has been quite open about it, our, our treasurer, um, our chancellor. He's, he's been quite open, that, you know, they're, they're looking at what they call Britcoin, a central bank digital currency. He's, he's announced it. But, you know, most of us go, la, 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 Rishi Sunak, la, la, you know. And and so it, it's put there, and it's only going to be when suddenly people find what I I can't buy this I, because what, what will happen with the central bank digital currency is that they will have what they call smart contracts, which you you get on um, cryptocurrencies, where um, you're told what you can spend on and what you can't spend on. So, for example, if you want to go and buy some beef, they'll go, no, that's meat. You can't spend it on that. You have to go and buy lentils, you know, that sort of thing. Or they'll say maybe there'll be a problem with the with the economy and they'll go, uh, you know, that money you've got in your account. Yeah, you have to spend it in the next two weeks because after that it will disappear. You know, that's the sort of thing that they can do with your money. Scary. That is incredibly scary. Yeah. Um, I read recently, uh, what page was it? I think it was Farms Not Factories, about schools not having meat anymore yeah. their menus. Yeah, there's a place, I think it's in Scotland. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a school there that they're just stopping meat. And um, in fact, the, uh, Colin Brazier on GB News um, uh, talked about that. And he was saying that's very unfair for the farmers around, you know, to, to mm. do that. And frankly, mm. unfair to the children. There may be a lot of children who want meat. You know, I mean, I think that's that's very, these are dr draconian measures. Fine if you want to be vegetarian. But, you know, there are, there are arguments for and against. So you can't I would imagine they are still in the minority. Yes, they are absolutely. So, I mean, it's it's a growing area. Vegetarianism and particularly veganism definitely growing, um, but still very much in the minority. And uh, you know, you only need to go to your local supermarket to find that the meat section really full. I mean, it is in where I live. Um, certainly, there are, I'm quite quite interested in that that because there are whole vegan sections, particularly vegan, um, but there don't seem to be many people around those sections. Whereas you've got trays and trays and trays for the meat <laughs> yeah. yeah and not very good meat at that quite often absolutely yes uh, i mean again you know if you can afford it i always say buy buy organic when it comes to meat just less of it and maybe the cheaper cuts because again you know when it comes to cutting down on on costs with with food there are lots of things that you can do day to day like going for the cheaper cuts of meat um yeah. and so I mean, I, what I do often say to people is do replace some meat dishes, some meat dishes with a vegetarian option because they do taste cheaper. So you can have mac and cheese one night instead of, you know, sausage and mash kind of thing. Um, but a lot of people like meat. Um, and as I say, there are there are definitely arguments for it. I have a friend who's vegetarian um, because she she prefers it. But she says that she's never heard of anybody being allergic to meat never no. heard, which is a very good point i've never thought about that but it's true isn't it you know? it is it is quite the changes are quite shocking and they're creeping in yeah absolutely and this is the thing we i think as as individuals we need to wake up more because they you know are our leaders or whoever's behind our leaders or whatever people who are, seem to be powerful in the world 
are, are getting away with all sorts of, of really bad stuff because we're just going, la, la, la. Oh, let's, let's. The board, the board of listening yeah. to their voices. Yes, absolutely. So it's all going like this. And, and then suddenly we're going to wake up one morning and go, oh, I, I, can't, I can't spend my money. I can't get onto the internet. There's a, I, a lot of people are talking about the fact that, you know, there's going to come a point when you won't be able to get onto the internet unless they know who you are. You're going to have to have a QR code to get onto the internet. You know, there, there are plans to, to curb our freedoms in every direction. We've gone off, really gone off the topic, haven't we here? But yeah. <laughs> We have. It's, we um, have, but that's because this is, I mean, basically it's all the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. It, being told what to do, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. having a whole trolley full, uh, trolleys, plural, of food yeah. that could be fed to people oh. and not being allowed to hand it over to them. Absolutely. Yeah, you're totally right. That That is the, the idea. But we are just being prevented in, in all areas from living a right life frankly and have our freedoms and yeah you're you're totally right it, it's the same thing all the way around and we are at the moment it looks like we will be prevented from deciding for ourselves where we spend our money and when we spend our money and how you know um and, and we've just got to wake up and start fighting against this um either you know in whatever way we can even on social media, you know, actually joining campaigns on social media because people, certainly the media does look at that. And by the way, have to be very careful with media. The mass media, the mainstream media cannot be trusted. And I speak as a journalist here. There are there are a few of the, the outliers that you can listen to. And I've actually just set up a sub stack called News Uncut where we're trying to, there's a lot of journalists, we're trying to put an alternative to the mainstream, um, you know, the narrative, as you call it. Um, but, you know, we, we've just got to be really careful. We've got to wake up now and and take notice and actually start campaigning for our own freedom. It's a terrible yeah. thing, but, you know, I literally do think that's where we're at now. I think my daughter was about five when she said to me, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now it's sort of a family joke. And I said to my husband, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah, yes. Not the boss of me. Boss of me. Um, but it's it is it is a serious matter. Mm-hmm. And um, on the on the subject of the uh, the social media and the radio stations, did you suggest was it GB Radio? GB News. Yes. The- there's GB News. I'm I'm on GB News every Thursday at lunchtime, and sometimes on at the weekends. Um, and GB News, you can get online. Um, it's it's on Freeview, Virgin and Sky, but you can also get it online. Just go to GB News. Um, but they also do have a radio version. As far as I can see, it's it's the television, but just the sound. You know, it's like television. But, really. yeah. <laughs> but is, it, is it a good, um, because I, I've been listening to LBC for years, but I'm finding that it's not. Exactly. They, they got everything. Yeah. I mean, I was really appalled that they got rid of Majid Nawaz because Majid um, was giving an alternative view and they've now got rid of the alternative view. And yes, I I, I sadly can't listen to it anymore. Um, and I, I think GB News is the only one. GB News and sometimes some parts of talk radio, actually, they're the only ones that give the alternative view. Otherwise... Right. Frankly, it really is a question of listening to Joe Rogan, you know, the one that has been so vilified by so many people. But again, Majid was on Joe Rogan's um, show uh, last week. Really fascinating program. It's three hours, but boy, is it good. Um, Like I say, news uncut. There there are a few outliers, and that's where you have to go now, sadly. It's not the mainstream. The mainstream is not telling it as it is, I think. And I... a mainstream journalist, you know, I'm I'm daily pretty angry with what they're putting out. In all honesty, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, and uh, we just turn it down or turn it off until the subject's finished, and then turn it back up again. Yeah, um, is uh, somebody from Money Magpie uh, watching this? Could somebody co- uh, put in the comments the the petition? Yes, good idea, Lydia. Lydia is is watching this. She is um, recording it, so. Lydia, if you can put in um, the, the change.org link here, that, that would be really good. Uh, that I'm would. 
comments at the moment and I can't see it at the moment but hopefully she will um, she'll bring it up but I will certainly send it to you Caroline as well I'll send it to you on email and you can uh, put it up if you want. and if any it doesn't matter where you are in the world if anybody would like to sign it uh, it would be really appreciated yeah that would be really great if you could do that oh yeah thank you for that well <laughs> we need to help thanks you yes um and i know there are so many subjects if anybody's got a, a money subject that they would like to talk about or like us to talk about because i don't know very much about that at all um uh, dm me and we'll see if we can get jasmine to come back on and uh, talk about it thank you great it's always great to be on your show caroline i think of this as your... <laughs> this is oh it's really great to have you is that oh, i don't i just wondering if I can, um, there's something you can do, pin comment. Oh, that's There you good. go. Oh, well done. Thank you. Um, yes. So um, we'll give, that, give people a minute just to, to write some of that down. I don't think you can copy and paste it off, unfortunately. Oh, okay. But, um, um, yeah. it's, it's a little thing to do. It is, isn't it? Just a little thing. If you could just go on and, and sign it. And then that shows to politicians, look, there, there is a weight of opinion behind this. We do yeah. need to do something. I mean, as I say, I hate waste. There's, we waste unspeakable amounts of clothes. That's a, a whole other thing, you know. We, there, there are, there's landfill full of, of fashion that nobody wants. Billions and billions of pounds worth of... of but there are clothes, thanks, <laughs> to be fair. There are clothes banks, and you know, I, I think again, the, the problem is the, the manufacturers because um, quite a lot of them they don't want to give away the clothes; they would rather throw them away, you know, brands, yes. etc. Yeah, which is yeah. terribly sad, I think. Um, so I think the fashion industry certainly needs to look much harder at this. I know they are aware of it, but you know, we need to do something quickly about that. But food, are there? Sorry, are, are yeah. there as many, um, um, you know, that on the high street there used to be charity shops everywhere? Are there yeah. still? There are. There are charity shops, thank goodness. Even the charities, I mean, this is the, the crazy thing. You know, um, I've spoken to, to charities that say, well, yes, we, we pick through what's given to us. We'll put on, on sale what we, can, we think we can sell. And the rest we bag up and send it to Africa. Wow. I know. It's weird, isn't it? And, and the, the problem with that is that, so they, they're selling it very, very cheaply to, to Africa. And then that, that is, is taken up by, by some business people who then sell it directly. But that, in some cases, is harming the indigenous clothes production. So it, it's, it's a bit, bit of a vicious circle. And I think this is something that charities are going to need to, to really address now. Um, and, and we as individuals are going to have to think about how many clothes we're buying, because clearly we're buying too many clothes with, you know, giving to the charity shop, which is better than chucking it in landfill, admittedly. But then it's not necessarily, you know, doing as much good as, as we think. I mean, I always give stuff to, to the charity shop because, you know, it seems obvious. But I do sometimes think, well, hang on a second, you know, I hope, it, I hope it will be sold. I hope it won't just be ragged or whatever. In fact, quite a lot of the time with, for example, um, towels and bed linen, if, I, if I'm, I want to get rid of those, I will bag them up and offer them for free on freecycle.org or Gumtree Free Stuff. You know, these are marvellous websites. I love freecycle.org. You can do it now on Facebook as well and nextdoor.com. You can give stuff away. Um, and, and that, I think, is, is a really good way of, of properly giving it away because you are giving it directly to somebody who, who will need it. A so, of, so how, how does that work, though? You put it on yes, a site? Exactly. So you take a photograph, um, and it's a bit like eBay, except you're not selling it, you're giving it. So freecycle.org is the website that I use the most. It's been going for a few years, and the idea of it was to stop stuff going into landfill. So you put a photograph, and you put at least a description, and there, there are lots of local ones. Um, so I put it on just free cycle and it, it comes up with my my local board I'll put it on as an offer and then basically the first person who gets in touch and can come and pick it up I give it to them that is sort of first come first serve 
and I've given away loads of stuff. And, and I often say to people, if you want to furnish your house free, go on free cycle, go on Gumtree free stuff. People give away um, fridges, televisions, um, sofas, clothes, um, bric-a-brac, shelving, all sorts of stuff. And and I think it's I. I think it's a great way of getting rid of quite heavy stuff, which otherwise you'd have to take have to pay. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's um, I'd just like to say I didn't do the eyes. I was at a shoot. That is why the eyes, I did not do them. They're well just impressive. So. I am so impressed. And the hair is lovely. What he's done with your hair is fantastic. Yeah, love it. Yeah. You, you, um, you, you look good. Thank you. Um, what was that? Here, because... Mm -hmm. There are so many workers here, more yeah. workers than non-workers Right. Yeah. You literally put anything that you have, be it a uh -huh. towel, a flannel, a, a fridge, whatever it is, yeah. you put it outside your door and it has gone. Yeah, excellent. Yes, that, yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, I've done that as well. Yes, there, there are certain Love things. That. Put it on the pavement, it's gone. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's really, really good. I, in fact... I was I went for a walk the other night um, around my area, and somebody left a couple of what I thought were really nice chairs. Actually, a couple of nice dining chairs, and I thought, oh, I quite like those. And then I thought, a bit difficult to carry, and I don't really need them, but they're nice. So hopefully, somebody <laughs> got them because <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I've called David and said, "There's that. There's a house down the road. It's got X outside it. If yes. it's there when you drive past, can you bring it out? Pick it up. Yes." Exactly. I mean, that's the way it should be, you know. That and I, honestly, I think I've said this before, but with you, um, I, I think the only way we're going to get through the next couple of years, because it's going to be tough price-wise for at least the next couple of years, I think, the only way we're going to do it is by sharing and not yes. holding stuff, sharing everything, sharing our space, sharing our time, sharing our food, sharing yes. our things you know it's the only way we can do it back to bartering you know yeah. mum used to barter she used to make pasties for the butcher and he would oh. give her meat brilliant oh that's it, fantastic uh, yeah but you wouldn't be able to do that now no exactly because it'd be health and safety oh i don't know Ugh, you know it's yeah. we are gonna have to just you know more and more we're gonna have to go off grid i think and do our own thing and um and support each yeah. other you know locally. Um, because all these rules and laws, it's, they're not helpful, really not. <laughs> I didn't put it on my eyes. I've been at a photo shoot. Thank you for saying I look like a clown. That is incredibly kind of you. You do. Um, I love it. it. It reminds me of Helen Mirren. You know, did you see those photos of Helen Mirren at that event a little while ago? I don't know who it was. She had really, really strong black. And it looked... It looked really, I thought it looked great. It was really amazing. <laughs> um, so for the last time, um, the pinned at the bottom, change.org, um, free goodism. We need to get that. Please sign the petition anywhere you are in the world. If you can just sign it. And it, if it can help people who can't afford to buy their food get food for free, then it's, it's a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer, isn't it? Thank you, Caroline. I'm glad that you agree because... I keep, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm banging my head against the brick wall going, <laughs> free food. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline. And I'm sure we'll talk again soon. We will. Lovely to see you. you. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.